Joining us here at Post 9 today is David Kelly, J.P. Morgan Asset Management Chief, Global Strategist. Happy Friday, David. It's good to see you. Glad to be here. Um, what do you think the number means overall? Well, it, it's a benchmark. I mean, I, I'm, I'm old enough to remember uh, the S&P 500, 500 back, back in the 1990s. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's remarkable. I think it's, if you look back over the decades, what you've seen is a huge increase in the profit share of GDP, in the value of financial assets. Um, so it, what we see is that companies can really do very well, even in a slow-growing economy, because that's really been kind of the history of the last 30 years, and I think that's, uh, that's what we're seeing today. Do the corporate results so far this quarter, and, and even folding in layoff news and efficiency measures, reaffirm the idea that the market can climb on earnings and not necessarily multiples? Not really. No, I think I think it's I think it's about multiples now. I think what happens is you know a a bull market gets going on earnings and the earnings are good and the earnings have been good and you know the margins are great. But the growth in earnings from here just can't be that big. But the, but what's happening is if you've got a stable environment, then people push the envelope on, on valuations over and over. You know we don't we don't stop with the limits of prudence. <laughs> uh, we, 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 we wait for a crisis, and so I think that's why the market can can grind higher, even though honestly. There is a, there's a limit to how much earnings can grow in this environment. So what does, how does that affect your, your base case or for the year or the year following? Well, it's, it, it's, it's tricky. I mean, our base case for 2024 is 2024, 2% 2 growth, zero inflation, uh, sorry, zero, zero recessions, inflation coming down to 2%, 4% unemployment. That's what we think is going to happen. And that's still, you know, the first month gone, that's still where we are. Uh, we think it's actually a very stable environment. If some shock occurs, maybe we have a recession, but we don't see that. We don't see inflation reigniting. So it's just very stable. I think it's that stability that's allowing the market to just grind higher. I, I would add also that the U.S. is really distinguishing ourselves in terms of growth here. We talked a little bit yesterday about decoupling. So China's now in a deflationary environment, yeah. and confidence is, I don't know, trying to come back, but a little shaky. Europe numbers have been weak. The U.S. growth numbers Absolutely. surprisingly resi where's it? I always turn to Carl because he always tells me when Atlanta Fed GDP is at. Uh, for we're the first in the quarter. three four range. Three four yeah, yeah. for Atlanta. I mean, it started below two percent. So I do wonder how much is uh, flows globally coming into the U.S. Well, I think that's certainly going on. Of course, there aren't flows going out from the U.S. In, into other markets either. I mean, American investors are investing in America, uh, so you can, you can clearly see that. Uh, but. What's really driving it is U.S. consumers are just relentless. U.S. businesses are willing to spend money, and, um, and this is allowing the U.S. to outperform. Dollar is still strong. I mean, ultimately, we think the dollar will come down. International talks are very cheap, but both international investors and U.S. investors are choosing America. The other thing about the dollar, uh, Joe Bruce Wallace made this point today, is that the year-to-date appreciation means that any spike in import inflation might be offset, right? Do we need to worry about the Red Sea less as a result? Uh, yes, and I, and I think the thing about the Red Sea is, you know, we, we are seeing certain indices bounce up like they did in the pandemic, but the pandemic supply chain issue was a very deep issue. There were many, many layers to it. This is just one part of the story, and it's not a very important part in terms of overall costs. So when you look at the, when you look at the inflation numbers, there are two big things, auto insurance and shelter costs, and those are going to grind lower all the way through this year. And so it's, you could even have a situation where wage growth stays at 4%, mm. doesn't soften, but the CPI headline numbers are just going to keep coming down. So I think we're going to have good inflation numbers here, even if wages are sticky.